Hey everyone, in some previous videos we talked about dockerizing Next.js and deploying it. And maybe you've already done that before because it can have some real benefits. So in this video, I want to zoom in a little bit more on dockerizing Next.js, how we can improve that whole workflow around dockerizing it. And especially if you work in a team, how we can improve the whole setup for you. So as you know, if we go to the Next.js docs, they describe here how we can self-host Next.js with Docker, support all Next.js features here. And I actually have some templates below here as well. So just as an example, I have a Next.js application here and it's using some very typical Next.js features, including a server action as well as a route handler. So this is a full stack application. It has both a client side as well as a server side. And then it also has navigation. So you can see I'm on a different page here. I can also go back. I'm also using the Next.js image component here. And this is running without Docker right now on my computer, just just using the dev server here. Now let's talk about how we can uh, dockerize this and what are some best practices or tips and tricks. So here they have some templates. If we click on Docker here, you will see a repo with a Docker file as well as a Docker ignore file that has been prepared for you by the Next.js team. All right, so here's the Docker file. And let me actually just copy this and create a Docker file here in the root of my application. I can actually also run Docker init. It will also give you a bunch of files, but it comes with some other boilerplate, which may not be optimal here. So I will just paste all of this here as well as a dot docker ignore file i will paste that right here as well what is in here what does this mean what do we need to understand from here all right now before we even take a look at the docker file itself we want to set output to stand alone and then when you run a build it will automatically trace just the dependencies that the app needs all right so then here in the docker file itself we see something about the syntax this tells docker to use modern syntax and then here we start off with a basic node.js image and the important thing to know here is that in the latest version version 16 next.js has a different minimum node.js version 20.9 we have alpine here and there's also uh, debian basically these are, these are more lightweight versions of this node.js standard base image all right so then here we have uh, like a stage where we're going to install the dependencies install the dependencies based on the package manager that the project is using so it will try to detect which package manager you're using if you're using pnpm it has to run a different command in our case it's going to find a package.json file and so it will run the npm command right now once we've built it here it does not need to be built later again so with docker we can then sort of keep using this later as well so, because there's a cache so then there is another stage here where we actually will run a build so we're going to start from the base again and we're going to copy all of those dependencies that we just installed into this app directory and then we're going to run a build this will create an optimized version of our next.js app all right and then finally we want to start the actual app we're going to switch to a non-root user and we're going to set the ports and ultimately we're going to start the server Right, so with mode standalone, it will create a server.js file that will start up a server. All right, now what are some other things that you need to know about? Well, what about that image uh, optimization? In the app here, I'm using the image component. This will create optimized versions of my images. Now, before, they recommended that you install the Sharp package. However, since Next.js 15, we no longer need to manually install it. It will be done automatically when we run the app in standalone output mode. However, if you're dockerizing an older Next.js version, they do recommend that you npm install the sharp package also make sure you have a dot docker ignore file so that we're not adding things that can bloat up the image size or other things that we just don't want in there all right and then i ultimately can run docker build from that docker file all right then to actually build the image we can run something like docker build and then i have a period at the end here for where the docker file is so here in the root now i'm giving it a specific tag here a name so this typically has some kind of structure so in this case i may want to push this to the github container registry so it's typically like this and then it's my name on github and then some actual name for the image i can give it some kind of version as well now i can run build here let's see and then here in docker desktop i can see i have one docker image here all right so i can actually run an instance called a container and I can set some settings. For example, if we want to keep using port 3000 here, I can add that right here. And now we see the familiar Next.js logging. Now, if I go to localhost 3000, I can see my Next.js app, but this is running in a Docker container, right? So if I check everything, you can see everything here still works. I don't get any errors here. So if you quickly want to try it out, I would recommend starting with the Docker example that 
they have in the documentation. All right, now is this as good as it's gonna get? No, actually we can make it much better uh, because especially if you have a big app, that can actually take a lot of time. And then if you have other team members and they need to get access to it as well, they would have to build it themselves as well or wait for your build to finish. So I've actually found a service that can speed up that workflow significantly which is actually depot.dev. They're also today's sponsor and they can actually accelerate your Docker image builds and GitHub Actions workflow. So it actually integrates with your work with your existing workflow very easily. The benefit is that we're offloading that build to Depot. Depot has optimized that whole build process. It can They can do it very fast. And then once it's finished, uh, we can run it locally if we want, or we can immediately push to a registry, including their own. And if we have team members, they can immediately benefit from that cache, that build cache as well. So it improves the whole team workflow. So let me actually show you how it works. Right, so here we can install the Depot CLI. So on Mac, that would be this. And then we can use that CLI very similarly to how you would use the Docker CLI itself. So it's almost the same. Instead of Docker, you basically just say Depot. And we can run that build locally. However, you can also configure it to make it work with your CI provider. But let's actually try running this build. And let me actually tag it the same as before, or let's actually call it depot. All right, so let's see. Initially you need to authenticate, and then it asks us which project this Docker image will belong to. All right, so then other team members can connect to the same project and they can benefit from that cache as well. We can add a depot.json file in the root of our project so it can remember the project for future builds. All right, so after some time it is finished and it has created a build summary. Let's open that up. So here we will see some details about that build, including the logs here. Notice that it has automatically launched an ARM64 machine. And that is most likely because I am on a MacBook and that is my chip architecture. But as we'll see in a second, they actually make it really easy to do a multi-architecture build as well. We can see the build context here as well. So Remember we were copying over a bunch of files into the image and we can see the actual Docker file itself as well. And they actually do mention to pin the versions here. So they give you some quick tips on how to improve this. But what we now have is a project and in that project I have one build here. And now other people can connect to this project and benefit from this build as well. All right, now you can see it's been built for ARM64, but Depot makes it really easy to build for multiple platforms actually. So I can just specify uh, for which platforms I want to build here. So not only ARM64, maybe I'll also AMD64. Because if you've watched some of my other uh, Docker videos with Next.js, if we want to deploy to a VPS, for example, the VPS may have a different chip than what is on your own computer. So if you try to build just on your own computer and then you push it all the way to your VPS, it may not work. So it's actually really nice that we can easily manage that here. And if you do want to run it on your own computer uh, first, just to check, for example, uh, it will make sure that it's loaded properly. So it will actually run. All right, but let's actually uh, try this. You can see it's launching two machines. And you can see while it's building that we already see information here in the dashboard. We can see how long the builds take. And you can see it took about the same, even though this is now for two architectures. So that's actually really nice. And it has a cache hit, right? So you can see that it was able to do it faster than expected because there was a cache built up from the previous build. And it even shows you how much time it saved. Right, so we're building a simple Next.js app here. But you can imagine if you have a complex app, which normally would take maybe 10 minutes or something like that, if you can shave off high percentages like this, that is a massive improvement. We can see more details about the cache in here as well, by the way, in case you want to explore that. All right, so the builds right now are on Depot's infrastructure. But what if we what if we want to run or test things locally before we continue? Well, I can specify the load parameter here. And Depot is actually able to load the right one for my machine, even though I'm building for multiple platforms here. So let's actually try that out. I have deleted the older images and containers here. So completely uh, fresh start there. So it will actually build on their infrastructure and then it's downloaded onto our machine. All right, so it's finished now after about 33 seconds. So that's faster than what we had before. And if we take a look at the dashboard, actually, it shows me that it had a huge cache hit of 93%. Even though we're building for two platforms here, this was much faster than before. As you build up a cache, it gets better and better and your other team members can benefit from that as well. All right, so now I can run this image and verify things here locally. So let's go there. You can see my app here is running here. If I invoke the server action and the API endpoint, everything here is still working. But this is now running 
in a Docker container, right, based on that image that we built with Depot. And let's actually try building one more time with the initial one here, just for a single platform here, just so we can properly compare how much faster it is. So I'm just gonna run another build here. All right, and actually now it actually only took 10 seconds and it shows me a cache hit here of 100%. So at this point, I guess most of the time is spent simply building the Next.js app itself. Right, so we're doing npm run build to create an optimized version during the Docker build. And again, if I wanna verify it locally, I just add load here. So with that, it will actually build and then automatically download it on, onto our machine. And then we can just run it to verify things locally. And as you can see, everything here is working perfectly fine. Now in the real world, typically we do not wanna keep it on our own machines. We probably put it on some registry. So Depot offers a registry out of the box here, right? So here we have a registry and it's registry.depot.dev. So you can see actually by default, it has already added some images here, but I can actually also specify the save flag here to actually explicitly save it to that registry. So I can still specify load as well if I wanna verify locally. And if I would save here, I would probably rename this because then it wouldn't be the GitHub container registry, but Depot's registry. And then let's say on some other machine, we actually wanna grab it from that registry. Well, I can just copy this reference. So it's on Depot's registry and now on some other machine, you wanna pull it on there. So actually I removed all the images here. I wanna pull it onto my computer, but it could be a VPS or some other place. Let's pull it onto the machine with Depot pull. And I'm using a reference here that you can copy from the dashboard here. And now here, when I go back, you can see I have my image right here, right? And I can run it, port 3000. And now if I go there, I have my Next.js app right here. Everything's still working. Right? The only difference would be, of course, that I would change the name of the image. It would be it would be registry.depot.dev. This is based on the project ID. Now, what if you actually do want to use your existing registry, like GitHub container registry? Well, in that case, uh, we can actually move it from the Depot registry to GitHub containers registry. I can use Depot push. Then I can specify an image from my project. I specify the ID of the project and then which one, well, it's this one, it can infer from the first part here where it should go. So let's try that. And actually it becomes interactive and I can pick which one I wanna push to the other registry. Let's pick the first one. All right, so actually you do need to be logged in yourself. So here I do need to log in to the container registry. So the way it works here with GitHub is that it's part of this packages here. So also for NPM packages, we're basically going to push that Docker image to here. Now we can create a an access token essentially here under develop, developer settings. I like the classic access, access tokens. I will generate a new one using the classic option. I can call it something like Depot Tutorial. I like a short expiration. And you basically only wanna pick the scopes that you really need, which is just gonna be writing and reading packages. I will generate the token. Make sure you don't show it to anyone else. I can paste it in here as the password and then I'm logged into that. So now I can try pushing again. I'll pick the first one and it's being pushed. All right, now if I refresh here in the packages, you can see my depot image has been pushed to GitHub. This is server to server, very efficient way of moving images around. I right, know what if you have multiple apps or services? Because here we just have one Next.js app. So we had one uh, Docker file here, but you may have a more complex setup where you have not only one Next.js app, but also a separate Node.js API server app, for example, and maybe also a database, right? Some Postgres database. So you may be using Docker Compose in that case to orchestrate everything. In that case, you would have a Docker file still for your Next.js app. You would then have another Docker file for the Node.js server. Basically, we need to create two images out of this. Here, we would already use a an image for Postgres, which is already created. But in this case, we would have to build two images. Does that work with Depot as well? And yes, actually. So in that case, we can use a Depot Bake to build multiple images. We can still load it onto our computer first as well to verify everything. And we just use this Docker Compose file. And so then, after that, you can just do the traditional Docker Compose up. And Depot works with GitHub Actions as well. You can find them right here on GitHub. So Depot allows you to build Docker images significantly faster on GitHub Actions. And they're doing it with optimized build compute and a Docker cache that is persisted. And they describe more in depth here in the documentation uh, some of the things that they do. So if you're interested in that, make sure to check out the docs. But basically they send the build context to a remote builder running an optimized build kit implementation. So this is the, the build engine under the hood in Docker. And they can run that remotely. So you don't have to run it on your own computer and take up all these resources. You can just hand it off to Depot so you can free up your own 
own resources and uh, you don't have to wait as long it's faster and, and other people can connect to the project and then also benefit from those builds right, so BuildKit performs the build and then sends the resulting image back to your machine or as we saw to a remote registry right, depending on the options that you pass and your depot project's persistent cache stores the resulting layer cache from the build automatically Right, so we were installing those dependencies, for example, and that can be cached. And then your team or CI provider accesses the persistent cache for subsequent build. And the only thing you have to do essentially is just change your command from Docker build to depot build. However, you can actually also configure Docker to use depot as the default builder. In that case, you can even leave your commands the same. And I actually have some really interesting options here for build auto scaling as well. And also for dev containers in case you're using that. They actually have some tips for your own Docker files as well. So in this case, uh, we were actually using Node.js. So they actually have some recommendations here. Um, so maybe you want to construct your own Docker file with these tips. And I actually provide remote agent sandboxes as well. So if you want to run something like cloud code in a remote sandbox, you can do that with Depot as well, actually. So then you can run Depot cloud and it will start a new session in a remote sandbox. So you have an isolated environment and you have a persistent file system with already some development tools set up and a session management and Git integration, optimized infrastructure and a web UI. You can access it through the depot dashboard, right? Actually, we can see that right here. And here we have an overview of the CI runners here. So, right, so all of that is visible here in the dashboard. So I'd say check out Depot. I had a great time using them. You can find a link in the description. And then I hope this helps you with your Docker workflows. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.